This is short tutorial that uh, kind of puts together a couple of things that I was talking about with the flat five chord, the flat five note in, uh, in a harmony and the flat, the nine, the flat nine chord and notes. Um, we were still, we were working with D7, G7, C7, you know, Go right around F7, B flat seven, E flat seven, A flat seven, D, D flat seven, you know, G flat seven, B seven, E, A, we're back to A again, D, G, C, yeah. Yeah, they they cycle of fifths just revolves around. Anyway, um, uh, starting on the D seven chord, uh, we'll I'll quickly just show you. This is an inside D7. We'll play an inside chord on this. We're going to use inside chords coming down. Like that. That was like D7, G7, C7, F7, B flat 7, E flat 7, A flat. Um, so anyway, the D7 here has a it has no D in it, this D7, you see, because you don't need it, because you've got the, we went over this before, how the, if you come down, well, the cycle of fifths, if you're on a D, start on a D7, you have on the bottom note, on the C string, you have an F sharp to a C, and that's F sharp is the third of the D7 chord, you got D, F sharp, A, C, on the C7 chord, so you've got the third, You've got the third, the F sharp, and you've got the C, the seven. So you've got the F sharp and the C. Now as they come down, what's happened is you got, and that's what came down for the, to the G7 chord I said, those two notes. What's happened is the third and the seven have inverted. They've reversed themselves. What was the F sharp, the third, and the C, the 7, the D7 chord, have become the F and the B of the G7 chord. Now the F is not the 3rd, the F is the 7, and the B is the 3rd. So they've reversed themselves. Before where you had 3, 7, now you've got 7, 3. And as you go down to the C7, they've rever inverted again. You've got 3rd, E. 7 B flat, then you go down to the F and you've got 7 E flat to the A the third of the F7 chord. Then you go down again, you've got D and A flat, which has become the D the third of the B flat 7 chord and the A flat the 7. And then you go down again. If you go down again, went down to that last one you can go down to here, you've inverted on the E flat chord, you've inverted to D flat, which is the, the seven of the E flat chord, and the G, which is the third of the E flat chord, then I just went up to A flat. I just resolved the E flat seven to A flat. So in that, in that cycle, you know, like, uh, Up the lazy river, like the old mill run. Lazy, lazy river, in the new day sun. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I do away your troubled dream, my dream is me. Up the lazy river, with a robin song. Awake so bright in the morning, you can sing along. The moon's got up above, everyone's in love. Up the lazy river. See that that's how the cycle of fifths went down in reversing the the seven and the and the third in those. Now in the D7 to talk about the flat five with that, just adding to that in the flat nine, if we take this D7 chord, which has the same as the open A, you got the A, which is the fifth. Remember, you've got the C, 
which is the seven, and you got the F sharp, which is the third. Now you don't have a D, and you don't need a D. You don't need a D at all. Now, to make that a flat in five, the fifth is the A. So you take the A down a half step. And that's what looks like an A flat seven chord, remember? Now, if you do that, and you went, what you're doing is, you have the D7 with the third, the seven, and the five to the flat five. Now when we go down here, we've got the F and the B from the G7. F and the B, and we leave up the A flat, which is the flat nine now. And you bring that down to the G, which is the tonic. So what you've done is gone D7, D7 flat five, now you've gone G7 flat nine. There's your flat nine to the tonic to the G7 and then C7 to the C7 flat five and then the F flat nine to the F and the B flat. You see the same way to the B flat flat five to the you see and you've just gone down by going the same as you went now you've got you've started adding in the tone colors the tone colors a uh, the D uh, the uh, flat five note basically you could call it various things but basically it is also a tone color the same as the flat nine or the nine the only thing that really matters in the harmony is the seven because the seven when you put it into the scale of C, and you go to what we call a five chord, the G7, the, the G7, I mean the C7, when you go to the C7, and in, a, in, a, in a, a scale of C, you add it in a B flat. That's not in the... It's there. You've added in the B flat, and when you add that B flat in, that's one flat, and that's really the scale of F. So that's what leads you to the F, is that leading tone of the B flat leading to the third in the F chord, the B flat in the C7 chord leading you to the A. That's the sounds you listen for to hear where the tonality is moving. Now that's the harmonies, the tonality of the song. And in modulation, the tonality keeps modulating and moving. And it moves by those things that alter. And the only thing that really alters that C chord is not the C major seven, that's a tone color. Not the C six, that's a tone color. Not the flat five, that's a tone color basically. Can you could call it like this basically? It's not any of those things. It's not the nine. It's not the flat nine. Those don't affect anything in the, in the scale. The thing that affects it in the scale is that B flat. Because that, cause that it just moves you right into the F. So that's what you've done. So the only thing that matters in there is the B flat. Because that B flat, the flat is there's no flats or sharps in the scale of C. So when you introduce that B flat, you've introduced one flat, and the scale of one flat is the scale of key, key of F. You've gone there. You're, when you're playing a C7 chord, you're not playing in the key of C. You could be playing in a lot of keys, but the one main key you're playing in is F. As your F scale. That's your F scale, you see, with that B flat is. So that's what you've done. 
So, if we've got the D7 inside and we use the flat 5, we're just adding tone colors now. Now you got the flat 9, G flat 9 to the G7. Now you got the C7 to the C7 flat 5. Now you've got the F7 flat 9 to the F7 tonic. And then you've got the B flat, straight B flat 7 chord to the flat 5. And then you've got, see how they move around? Now, since, since the D flat is entered into that E flat, the last one we use, it goes off to the key of A flat at that point. So, so you can really hear by listening to those. The other thing that's very important is the minor. Because an F minor chord, an F major chord is in the scale of F. An F minor chord is not in the scale of F. It's a par called a parallel minor. The relative minor that's in the scale of F is D minor. When you play a D minor in F, you're in a relative minor. When you play an F minor in an F major, you're in a parallel minor because that introduces a whole new thing. And what it introduces is the key of A flat. Hear it? Hear the F to the D minor? You see? So you got to listen to see what happens. The two notes that really affect the harmonies that really affect the harmonies. Forget the tone colors and all the other. Forget fourth harmonies. I was talking about those with, with Johnny Gill last night and with the, with the Simon Wettenhall. We were talking about harmonies, poly, uh, uh, polyphonic harmonies, like modern chords. When you add the modern chords, you've got an E minor seven over the top of, of a C. You got a C major nine chord because it's got a major seven. Now you can't put this natural seven in because then you've got a whole other thing. When you introduce that B flat, but as long as you have that B natural in there, you've got an E minor over the top of a of a of a C. You you you're, you're not altering anything. That's two different keys at the same time. That's why it's called polyphonic music. You've got, like if you had a D chord over the top of a C. That's legitimate, that's legitimate. That's used in, oh it's a long, long while. From May to December. Oh the days grow. Now look here. Look at that. A, a D chord over the top of a C. Down to F minor six. When you rave September. Back to C major. He's fiddling with C majors and C minors all through that. When he goes to the to the, he's really implying an F9 chord. When he goes, oh it's a, now he goes to C minor with the melody A, and he's implying an F9 chord. That's, that's uh, Kurt Weill, and he was a marvelous, marvelous writer from Germany, especially in his German period. But he uses that for this for the four chord, but it's it's dangerous because that makes modern guys put the F under it, and that's not what he played. He actually just played just the minor and implied the four chord. Oh, it's He's implying that A and that F. And then it goes up to the, the G goes up to the A flat chord. Still like a C minor, but you've got a, an augmented fifth. The G augmented fifth makes an A flat chord from the C minor. And then the melody is up the A flat chord. C, E flat, A flat. Then back to the C chord, C major, where you started C major. Then C, E, G, C. Now here's where that polyphony comes in. The 
the D over the C, and then the F minor, back to the C major. You see? Now that's not marvelous writing. That is actually marvelous writing. He did that stuff on pop music. He and the Kurt Vile was was an absolute friggin' genius. There's no doubt about it. He does that all the time. He does that in that old Bill Bowman. Ah da da! I won't forget it soon. It goes right to B flat minor. Same thing. He's implying that E flat seven, but you don't want to hear it. Then he then he does another thing. He goes right to an F augmented. This is in Bill Bowman. He goes right to an F augmented. Which, which moves that, that B flat minor one tone. And he's on an F augmented chord and that leads back to the B, the B flat major. He, he, he was a marvelous, marvelous composer. There's no doubt about it. And he let his classical music overlap into his pop music. That's Kurt Weill. I'm going to stop now, but where we've gone, I'll get to Kurt Weill and we'll go into all that other stuff which introduces the polyphonic harmony. Different keys at the same time, at the same time. But before that, we just had tone colors. That's all in the normal scale. Tone colors in the normal scale, and remember, the, the seven adds a new note, a new flat or sharp into the scale. And when it does it, it goes, throws it into a different key immediately. But the major seven doesn't, it's a tone. The A, the six is a tone color. The flat five is a tone color for all practical purposes. We can, we can use it for other things. But now, this also introduces the, 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 the flat nine. Now we'll also get back to how the flat nine is really a, a diminished chord. Because here's your C7 flat 9, and here's a C sharp diminished chord. You're just taking a C sharp diminished chord and putting a C under it. That's what a flat 9 does, and that's how, that's what makes it, I'll explain later, what makes it modulate to other keys so easily. So if you listen to those things, if you listen to those introductions of those different tones, you can hear where the music is going. You can follow the music around because you can hear by those, when you learn those notes, hear those notes, it sends you off into a different tonality. It sends you into a different tonality. But we'll get to Kurt Weill, we'll get to all those things, if you want to, if you want to. Anyway, that's it for, for right now for the flat five, flat nine, which was on a cycle of fifths.